Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. It seems like the situation in Ukraine uh, for the Ukrainians is worsening. It's getting uh, a little bit more complicated uh, as days progress. And it seems like, according to Mr. Oleksiy Danilov, who's uh, a feisty Ukrainian uh, Secretary of Security, National Security, Defense, blah, 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 tralala. And this guy usually is hard to uh, bring anything that would, um, uh, you know, tell us that, hey, maybe uh, Ukraine is in a uh, precarious situation or has uh, limitations or anything. So he's a, a guy who just uh, embarks on, um, you know, we are winning and those guys are bad. And we have an article here from Ukraine Forum, which is a uh, Ukrainian, obviously, uh, media outlet. And uh, this is from today, Wednesday, February 8th, 2023. And this is the title. Danilov admits likelihood of Russian offensive on Kharkiv and Zaporozhia regions. So let's see who's Oleksiy Danilov. I have a little picture here of uh, Oleksiy Danilov. Okay, this is the guy. And uh, imagine he's your boss, um, but maybe not. And uh, let's go. Uh, I don't have a preference for this guy. Is just giving me uh, some, I don't know, based on his uh, statements uh, and um, body language or appearance. Anyway, so let's see where um, Zaporozhia and Kharkiv regions are. So this is um, uh, Ukraine right here. Uh, the blue areas here are the ones once uh, under um, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian Russian control and they were gained back by the Ukrainians through the offensive I don't know, September or something last year. And then uh, we have here the Kharkiv region right here where supposedly the um, Russians will conduct offensive operations in Zaporozhia which is right here. And so uh, Currently, the hottest spot in, uh, in this war is right here, where Bakhmut is, in this area. And it seems like they're ex extending towards Kharkiv. The Russians, sh the Russians shelled Kharkiv a few times last night and yesterday. And in Zaporozhia, uh, it, they brought about a month ago, I reported that, about two long columns of... Um, uh, how do you call those, uh, weapons and uh, military personnel. So they were getting ready here at, in Vukhledar area and in Zaporozhia here in this area. Now Kharkiv, it seems like the Russians are in an offensive operation or at least uh, according to Danilov, which, uh, who is a very trustworthy person. And what's also interesting is that the British intelligence, you know, the British intelligence, yeah, very reliable source, they said on numerous occasions that the Russians are, um, are incapable of conducting offensive operations on multiple fronts. Uh, I think I saw this kind of article about um, two or three weeks ago, and this is what uh, they assessed. But now I saw articles uh, reporting that uh, actually the British intelligence thinks that the Russians will uh, conduct offensive operations on, uh, you know, Kharkiv, Zaporozhia, uh, Donetsk Oblast and all that. So uh, they can do that. So it's very interesting how these guys are just changing their intelligence based on how the wind blows uh, or something like that. So let's see what Danilov has to say here. So Alexei Danilov, Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council, said that the Kremlin could strike a new blow in the northeastern part of Kharkiv region or the southern part of Zaporozhia region. So he's either or. All right. In, in, uh, in the title here, it says that admits likelihood of Russian offensive on Kharkiv, comma, Zaporozhia. So that means that and that. He is enumerating them. It's not either or. But here we said northern part of Kharkiv or the southern. Anyway, the, spoke, the, uh, the, spoke, the official spoke in an interview with Reuters 
and I'm quoting, attempts to attack either in Kharkiv or Zaporozhye directions direction will, of course, be made. So he has no doubt that uh, um, that will happen because he says will, of course, be made. Okay, so it's a certainty right there by saying will, or at least, you know, in the future he's certain that that will occur. How successful they will be depends on us, end quote. And on them, and on them, if they screw up, uh, it's, it, it, you need to, to <laughs> tango, right? According to the security official, the intensi intensification of Russian offensive actions is due to the anniversary of full-scale invasion and the need to demonstrate some type of results, the result to the Russian population. So, the intensif in intensification is due to the anniversary. Isn't that because they have the capability first? I mean, you can want that. You can want to, be, oh, it's because of the anniversary, but you need to be able, you have to have the potency to do that. Um, anyway, but see, he, he, tur he makes everything here um, how to, how to, symbolistic. Like the Russians, uh, you know, uh, he's not, he's not uh, out in the field too far. So he's not lost. It's true what he's saying but it's not the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, so he's, he's coming with that because that's the way he wants to focus. But uh, he, obviously, if that, this would be a, uh, a positive article about a, a positive towards uh, Russia article and a person who would be sympathetic to Russia would obviously report it the other way because the Russian forces are so strong and Ba 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 ba, and that might coincide with this and that, which I pre I'm pretty sure that uh, symbolism could play a role in uh, in this decision. But uh, as far as I, I could uh, say and see about these uh, Russians, they uh, do not really care about the symbolistic. They had the opportunity to be symbolistic in many, many, many times before, and they didn't do it, and. Um, you know, it's strange that this guy, I'm not saying it's impossible, as I said, I can see that happening, but what I observed so far is that Russians are not very uh, sentimental. They do not uh, conduct this war on the sentimental uh, and on the, okay, they, they, oh, they did this, oh my God. No, it, it seems like they're very, um, evidence supports that, I would say calculated in their uh, attacks and offensives. You can't always, you know, follow the script and, uh, you know, achieve your goals, obviously, and they had their setbacks. But if you look at the map, which, uh, you know, we have to look at it from time to time, uh, we have here Russia having all these things, territories taken. So however um, or whatever the free mass media in the free world uh, tell us, about the Russians losing and, and so on, you just have to look at the map and see, okay, uh, how long have they been in this position? For about a few months, five months, four, four months or so? And this, yeah, they lost this one, that's true. When? Four months in September or something. So you got September, October, November, December, January, and now in February, it's about six months ago, nothing happened there. So if you say, okay, the, the war is over today, who won and who lost? I mean, look at the territories. I would say that the guys in the red uh, won, not the other guys. Um, I mean, this is a fact. I'm not talking about sentimental here uh, or anything like this. It's, it's a fact just looking at the evidence. Now, if you want to ignore evidence, that's a different story. But um, let's uh, see what else this guy is saying about the symbolistic nature of uh, the Russian offensive. And I'm quoting, they need to show something to their people and they must be really willing to do something great in their opinion but this by this date he said again he's just using the symbolistics uh, and again symbolistics work as long as you have the potency the, the capability <laughs> and if you don't have it this would mean nothing and so far it seems like the russians are breaking through at least uh, eight fronts i think there are five in uh, donetsk area and there are three open ones in the Luhansk area. So Danilov also, that's according to the Ukrainian side. I covered that in a previous video, or actually two videos, 
one with the five and the other one with the three plus the five. Danilov also noted that Russia still wants to seize the entire territory of Donetsk and Luhansk regions. That's absolutely accurate and correct. Yes, they do want to do that. I'm glad they don't say uh, they want to uh, seize all the, ter the entire territory of Ukraine, because something like this uh, is just in some people's brains and imagination, or I don't know. As you can for I didn't see any evidence to support that claim. Not even statements from the uh, Russian leadership saying, yeah, we're going to go and conquer and uh, take the entire territory of uh, Ukraine. I haven't heard that. I mean, and if, you, if they would ha set that as a goal, I would expect that uh, that, uh, that goal would be uh, expressed on many, many, many occasions. But they didn't. So anyway, let's see what's going on here. So as I said, Danilov also noted that Russia still wants to seize the entire territory of Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Correct, that is correct. And if you bring long-range missile systems that are capable to hit inside Russian territory, let's say you got it for 150 kilometers that they're talking to uh, about sending right now, they will push you at least 150 kilometers westward so you can't use those. And what's going to be in that uh, 150 uh, 150 miles uh, was going to be a no man's land is going to be something like a buffer zone this is what Lavrov said on multiple occasions and it makes sense you're not going to leave these guys that will want to destroy you well for good reasons or for bad reasons obviously uh, you let them just stay by your border and shoot inside of your uh, newly uh, extended <laughs> country with uh, rockets that can go or missiles that can go 150 kilometers. So makes sense. That's what's going to happen if the Russians again have the potency. As Ukraine Forum reported earlier in an interview with CNN, the Secretary of the National Security Council stated that Ukraine has weapons on its own production that can hit targets on the territory of Russia. Yes, we know that. And you have those old uh, the ones that we know for sure. You have those old drones. I covered that on, on yesterday's uh, video. Those Soviet ma made from 1970s uh, that have a uh, jet engine uh, as a propeller. Well, as it propels them uh, up to 1,000 kilometers inside Russia. That's way past Moscow. And if you remember, they, you know, Ukrainians, use those drones. They're like rockets, big rockets, and they put a, uh, uh, you know, a, a bomb <laughs> as a tip, and that's uh, what they. Uh, that's how they attack. The, if you remember those airfields, a strategic bombers airfields uh, on um, Engels airfields about 500 or 600 kilometers inside uh, Russia. So yeah, that's uh, they have them. That's the least we know they have them and they will receive right now allegedly or not allegedly they said they will send ukraine some uh, uh rockets no they they said they are sending them those little uh, bombs it's called something like missile bomb blah 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 i think it's have about 50 kilograms or something of explosive that can be used on the high mars and uh, fly about uh 150 kilometers so they extend that from 80 kilometers to 150 so uh, basically almost double they can hit so that means the russia said okay no problem we're gonna try to destroy those, destroy those continue to destroy those weapons and in the meantime the buffer zone extended now if the buff if this guy is gonna get uh, i don't know uh, 700 kilometers uh, you know uh, range missiles then probably the Russians have to put them 700 kilometers toward the, the, the west. And if that's going to get to Poland, I guess so be it. No, that would be crazy and stupid. So anyway, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.